What's up, YouTube? If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. If you're a subscriber, thanks for coming back. Got another video for you guys. This conversion on this travel trailer that I wanted, that I'm doing, I want to do a little bit more explanation on exactly how I do things, not just quick videos on what I've already done. Uh, so this one's going to be about the way that I'm reinforcing the frame to accept the extra load of the of the flatbed style versus a travel trailer, which a lot of people don't understand, is that a travel trailer is actually built very much to be a unibody design, meaning the, the actual structure on the frame, the house sitting on the frame. Truck. The house sitting on the frame actually adds rigidity to the frame. Uh, so once you strip that house off, once you strip all that flooring off and everything, the frame can get very weak and um, wiggly, honestly. Uh, there's a lot of flex to the frame. Uh, so I'm going to turn the camera around here and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I'm going about reinforcing this frame. So I kind of touched on it in the last video, uh, like I was saying before, this is a 16th inch thick uh, piece of angle right here that's welded onto the main uh, beam, which is 4 by 5.4 pounds structural steel channel iron. Um, so th this is plenty strong, this, these are the weak points here, this is this 16th inch steel here and here. So this piece here didn't have this extra l on it here reverse l to add the rigidity what this was it was just this piece here that came down and then stopped here and you could actually just take this with your hand and pull it and just it would just bend completely out of place so to add strength and rigidity what i did was took this eighth inch two by two angle and welded it going the opposite direction and welded it all along the underside here, welded it along here, and then uh, put a little bit of a cap here on the end. And what this does is it creates kind of a homemade Z channel, which is a pretty stiff, you, you can use pretty thin material, and it ends up being pretty stiff. So I'm about 250 pounds. And that was me jumping up and down. Well, not jumping, but you saw. I mean, I was putting all of my weight on that one foot, trying to get it to bend, and there is just minimal, minimal flex. Um, and so once, you know, you'd get the rail, I'm going to cap this. I'm going to take a piece of angle iron, and it's going to be overlap the top here and then come down along the outside to kind of cover this and cap that. That's going to be, I mean, super strong. It's going to be almost bulletproof. And then here on the inside of the frame, so this is one of the, the frame cross members that goes between the two frame rails. Uh, there's one right here and then you can see the one over there. This is the same thing. It was the very thin 1 16th inch angle and when I first got this home and I got the floor off of it and everything, if I stood on this, it would just completely torque out of position. It, it, I mean, it was distorting really badly. So I took the same eighth inch angle and ground it down to a super snug fit between the frame rails. Uh, I was actually, I was tapping it in with a hammer on each end to get it to sit completely up against here. Same thing, so this is the lip here, this is the lip here, so you've got kind of a homemade Z channel. And again, it took it from a piece of metal that would flex and torque way out of position to now, I'll put my body weight on it. So it was just barely moving there. It, you know, it's obviously going to flex a little bit. You don't want it to be totally rigid. You need a little bit of flex in any kind of structural uh, beam or uh, build that you do because if you make it too rigid, it's just gonna rattle itself apart and crack welds and things like that. You need a little bit of flex. That little bit of flex there uh, is exactly what I'm looking for. And then once I get the decking bolted on here and there's gonna be carriage bolts going through, uh, I believe I'm gonna use two by eights 
Um, it's going to be bolted through here with the, the two bay. It's running long ways down the trailer. This thing's going to be rock solid. And then now here, anywhere that there wasn't one of these already, I basically built one. And so what I did here was I took the two by two, uh, leveled it here to the to the main frame rail, welded this on here, uh, beveled it, welded it, and then took this lower piece here and did the exact same thing that I had done on the existing. Uh, I'm just gonna call them wings, outriggers, whatever you want to call them. Um, I welded one on here to do the exact same thing so that it would support this weight here. Um, and then anywhere there wasn't a cross member already, I added one uh, using the same material again. With these ones, wherever I added one, the material was sufficiently strong that I didn't need to add the second support between the frame rails. I only did that on the outsides because there's nothing supporting this outer end over here. There's nothing supporting out here. So I needed something that was going to kind of uh, jack it from the, the, and run this at an angle and jack up this outside corner so that if something, some heavy weight or something got put on out here, it wasn't just going to fold under and uh, buckle down. And then the final thing that I did in regard, regards to these outriggers or wings or whatever you want to call them is if you look straight down here, these were the existing ones sticking out a couple inches farther. Uh, so the trailer would have ended up being uh, a little over seven feet wide, but I'm going for a true seven feet wide by a true 14 feet long. And so I took a sawzall with the torch blade and I just cut them off even so they're 12 inches from the outside of the frame rail to the outside of the uh, outriggers, you know, jacks, you know, whatever we're going to call them. Let me know down in the comments what, what these are called, if you know. I'm not sure. Um, I'm inclined to call them outriggers, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. So here, we're on the other side of the trailer, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Where, um, actually now that I'm here in front of it a little bit closer, I can see where I got a little bit off my line here. So I'm going to have to come back and, and clean that up because I'm OCD, I guess. Um, but you can kind of see these outriggers here is what we're going to call them, unless you guys tell me differently, uh, are the length that they were originally. And you can see that they're, you know, they're a few inches longer out here. This is the ones here. The reason they're still full length is because I had to get the step off of there. That's where the step was. So the front door or the, the only door to this trailer would have been right here. Uh, that's where the step was. I had to get the step off of there. And then I have to go in and cut these, uh, extra pieces here, cut those off. And then weld in the support with the uh, last two pieces of short angle that I have and weld that in, get them nice and strong and then cut off the ends so that everything going down the side is all even. And then once that's all done, I'll be able to come in here, uh, get two more sticks of the angle that I'm using and just go straight down and have nice solid caps going all the way down on all of these outriggers holding these things strong and then that should be it for the reinforcement that I'm going to do on here with all of that the reason I'm adding all these extra cross members and, and outriggers rather than just reinforcing the stuff that's existing is I have decided to upgrade this axle from a 3,500 pound to a 5,000 pound axle so I want to make sure that there's no question that this frame is going to be able to hold that extra weight there you go guys so that's basically what I'm doing to uh, increase the rigidity and the strength of the trailer frame. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you are enjoying this more in-depth explanation of exactly what I'm doing um, or if you think it's a waste of time and you just want to see me blast through the project. That's cool too. Just let me know down in the comments um, whichever way you want to go and I will do my best to accommodate but I just thought that you know at least a couple of you out there might be a little more interested in when I say I'm stiffening the frame or reinforcing the frame what exactly that means thanks for watching I uh, appreciate you taking the time and I will see you in the next one